All right. Welcome, Grayson College faculty. We are recording this, so this will be posted later into Canvas announcements. Welcome back from your uh, Christmas holidays, New Year break, and welcome to spring 2024. Uh, today, uh, this afternoon, for one hour, probably a little bit less, Regan and I are going to just uh, review some things that can help you create videos in Canvas. And I was just talking to Regan earlier about our, our main point is just to remind you that there's a lot of tools you can use for creating videos and that it's a really good thing to know. It's a good uh, tool to have in your toolkit, how to make a video. And I would say the two most complex educational tech tools that we have at Grayson College is probably, and Regan can see if he agrees with me, See if you agree with me. I would say Lockdown Browser is a really complicated ed tech tool to use, and using videos in Canvas can be can be complicated too. So if you get those two things in your toolbox, you're rocking and rolling. You're going on online education. So we have a couple of things we're going to cover today. I'm going to cover uh, the media recording tool in Canvas, which is really easy to use, and then I'm going to cover ScreenPal. The media recording tool is in Canvas, and that's easy to use. And then ScreenPal, it used to be screen, Screencast-O-Matic. And I like ScreenPal because Grayson College is going to buy you a deluxe version of it. And if you see in the chat room right now, you'll see a link to ScreenPal and a password, Spring 2020. You can use that to get your uh, ScreenPal account. I like ScreenPal. I mean, I've looked at, you, you can use any uh, video editing tool. You don't have to use the ones we're talking about today. There's a lot of them out there. Some people have favorite ones like Yuja. Uh, Screencastify is popular. Camtasia is probably my favorite, although that's a little bit more expensive. Uh, it's like 169 for an educational license. And then Regan has some favorites like, uh, don't tell me, um, Premiere Pro, Castify things like that. He's got his favorites. So people people end up with their favorites. Uh, I like screen I like screen pal. Really it, you can you can do almost you can do everything in screen pal that you can do on Camtasia except add an interactive quiz that goes to your gradebook. You can do that on Camtasia. In screen pal you cannot do that, but you can edit the videos in screen pal and I'll be looking at that a little bit. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen and start looking at the video tool in Canvas. And it should be right there, I think. OK. So you should be seeing a Canvas assignment. My assignment is called Video Test. And in any anywhere in Canvas where there's the rich content editor, which is what you're looking at right here, where it says edit view, this is the rich content editor. Anywhere in Canvas where you have that, you have the media tool that you can record. So that's going to be, in this case, I'm in assignments, but you're also going to have the rich content editor in quizzes and discussions. So anywhere you have that, you can go over here to this toolbar. And right over here where it looks like the little video and musical note, if you hover over it, usually it'll say media upload tool. But I'm going to click on this. And you can link to course media or your own user media. But we're going to here, we're going to click upload or record media. Okay. And from there, it's going to ask me if I want to upload anything media already on my computer or record. And so, are you seeing this okay, Regan? Yes, sir. Okay. If I hit record, then uh, hopefully it'll capture me. Um, I'm sometimes it's a little tough because I'm on Zoom capture and my Zoom is using my camera. Yeah. And so, you should see a picture of me right here because it's just gonna it's gonna default to your camera when you hit this record button. It's going to go to your computer camera um, because Zoom is already capturing mine. You can't see me here. Let me try to hit web, webcam. Uh, yeah. It's not going to. Uh, again, this 
because I'm already on Zoom, I'm using two uh, video capture tools at the same time. So you're not seeing me on here. But if, if, if you just go into this without being on Zoom already and you click record, you're going to see whatever your uh, camera, you're going to see you if your camera's pointing at you. And you can just start recording. So you can record a video of, of a, a brief discussion, a, a brief lecture. Um, I really recommend this for introductory videos in our Canvas course checklist. It now recommends an inter introduction when you're introducing yourself to use text or video. This is a really good way to embed teacher presence into a course so they can see there's a person there, not an AI tool or AI bot. There's an actual person. That's what they look like. And so you can just re record a brief uh, message. You can record a message at any time. And students have access to this as well. In the RN to BSN program, some of their discussions are done using this. So what they instead of posting a text discussion, they, each student makes a, a brief presentation of them talking. So students also have access to this tool. Okay. Any questions on that? That is the Canvas media tool available to everybody in Canvas. Now I'm going to look briefly at ScreenPal. To those of you who've just joined in the chat, I have put a link to ScreenPal. Using that link, you can get a Grayson College Deluxe account at ScreenPal and using that password, Spring 2020. Now, you don't have to get that account. Basically, what the, what the Deluxe account will give you is you can make a video over 15 minutes. You can get a free account and make one up to 15 minutes. Now, I know Regan would agree that you really seldom want to make a video over 15 minutes in recommendations for online learning. In fact, you really don't want to make one over seven minutes. Uh, and now these are just from research we, that we see in teaching and learning is that after six minutes, student uh, interest drops drastically. So your best videos are usually going to be four to six minutes, I would say. Instead of making a 15 minute video, I would consider making two seven minute videos with another cognitive activity, a cognitive break, something else for them to do uh, in between that. Now, having said that, nothing's written in stone. We have a couple of programs that have used uh, 20, 30 minute videos and they really like them and it works well for their students. So I would really consider mostly never doing a video over 15 minutes. And, and I, I don't think I've made one over eight minutes ever and try to keep them even shorter than that. Having said that, this video I'm making right now is probably going to be 30 or 40 minutes <laughs> because that's the length of the workshop. So <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to go to that. So after you click on the screen, pal, here's what you're going to see once you get an account. you'll see this purple blue theme with ScreenPal. Really? And you will, so for me, what you see is the videos I already have. So the videos I've made are stored right here. And that's really all I use. I use that and up here in the upper right where this red dot says launch recorder, I use that as well. That's the main thing you're gonna use. So basically what you do in ScreenPal is you're mostly gonna be launching this recorder and picking what screen you wanna record. And then after you save it, your video is going to be saved here. So you're going to have two places. You're going to have this hosting tool and you're going to have your video launch recorder that, that opens up. Once you've recorded them, you can come here, like on this Where's on Oon, I can click on details. And I'll just do that real quick. And you can edit it here. And right here, the second one, you can share it. So you can get an embed code there once you made your video and use that embed code. And uh, right before the end of my presentation, I'll come back to that to remind you. But that's basically the videos I've made recently. So I'm going to try something here. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Now, because I'm going to try to launch this recorder. And what it's going to do is I will have two screen capture tools going. Because right now I'm on Zoom as a screen capture, and I'm going to launch another screen capture. The reason I'm uncertain is because in the past, sometimes it's allowed me to do it and sometimes it doesn't. 
So it should allow me to bring it up at least, although probably not, of course. I'll go ahead and click on it. And then down at the bottom, you'll get a, a, a message that it's launched. And it's launched over here on my other page. So I'm going to do a, a different share. I'm going to stop that share. And I'm going to share that other page right there. Does that come up, Regan? I can't hear you, Regan. <laughs> Sorry about that. I had my mic muted. Yes, and I can also see the screen capture, uh, the screen pal capture box as well. This says screen camera and both. Correct. Okay. Well, it loves us today. I don't know why. That's great. So uh, you should be able to see uh, a, my Canvas course and over that, the Screen Pal control box and a little toolbar up here. Okay. So I'm pretty sure I, so I can't actually do a recording. I know that because Zoom is already recording. Wouldn't be able to do both, but I can I can show you here what it looks like, and then I can switch to my uh, PowerPoint and show you what some of these tools will look like. But basically, you're mostly going to be hitting record. So first, well, let me back up. First of all, you can see this black and white dotted line around it. That's the screen you're going to record. And you can you can drag and drop those corners to you know get exactly what uh, I want to bring that in. You can adjust exactly the frame that you want to record. So you're going to do that first. And then second, you're going to decide, do I just want my screen? Do I want my camera? Or do I want both? I usually do both. I, you know, I, I definitely mostly going to want to do your, your screen, what you have. But it's really good to do both and have a little camera of you in the corner. Again, it's not showing me there because I'm, Zoom is already using my other uh, camera for the Zoom. But when you're using the tool without Zoom, you'll see your face down here in the corner. And again, this is ideal to use just to keep that teacher presence, that there's a person there. Uh, very important to do in online learning is to think about teacher presence. So basically, I hit record. And when I'm done, I hit pause. And then... Can you see these this box up here in the top, Regan? I can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, with the with the with the annotation tools. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So there's two the, the, there's two places you can do these annotation tools in Screen Pal. One is right here. Like after you've after you've recorded, you can click. This is basically a pencil and then a thicker pen and an eraser. Type some text make a box for highlighting, or you can zoom. You can zoom up a certain section of it and then undo and do. So right now I haven't recorded anything, so I wouldn't be able to do those. But once I've recorded even a few seconds, or if you pause, you can immediately use some of these uh, tools. So I wish, I wish that would go away. I already know that. Um, so um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop my screen share and go to see some uh, screen captures because I can't, like I say, I can't actually do a screen capture on here. Uh, so let me let me do that real quick. Let me just stop that share and find my PowerPoint. Copy links. And let's see. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Okay. So you should should see my PowerPoint here. Um, so it's the same screen. It's a screenshot of what I just had. It's the Screen Pal tool. You're going to click record. And what I recommend is just doing a, even four seconds. Just go record for four seconds and then pause it and then play with some of the editing, editing tools, which I'll look at real quick. So you're going to hit record right here. And then the next page, it's so you're going to hit record. You're going to uh, go for a oh, oh, skip the page oh wait okay no i'm right i'm right um then you're going to hit pause and you can at that point decide if you're going to save it save it to screencast-o-matic you can do a quick share and just get the link or you can you can start to edit it from right here 
I, I, I don't usually edit it at this point. The thing about ScreenPal is you can edit it at almost any point. You can edit it after I pause it. I can edit it after I save it. I can edit it once it's back on my original dashboard. There's just tons of places to edit. So usually what I end up doing here is I just save it. And I usually, you can save it to your computer or you can save it to Screencast-O-Matic. I usually save it to Screencast-O-Matic because you can host the video from there. They'll sort of store it there for you and uh, you don't have to use your computer space. And it's really easy to ed continue editing the video from there. So I usually upload it and save it to Screencast-O-Matic. Um, but then I'm gonna look, so what in this next screen, I've clicked the edit button. So if I click the edit button, you're gonna see this. You're gonna see your video. You're gonna see a timeline at the bottom and you're gonna see tools, okay? So it's hard to make out, but right now, right at the beginning of the timeline, there's a little blue line and you can pull and drag this line anywhere throughout the timeline and that will move your, that will advance your video to that frame. And wherever you have that frame stopped, that's where you can do any of the edit tools. So all right, on this screen capture, I've clicked the word tool and here's the tools you can edit with. You can cut, copy, hide, insert, narrate, et cetera. I, um, I almost only use overlay. Uh, I don't usually, you can add narration. Like if you have a video and there's no narration to it, you can put it in ScreenPal and then just narrate over it. Or you can cut part of your video out if there's a section you don't like. Um, you can replace sections. You can add other videos. You can pause it and make it go to another video. There's a lot you can do. I would stick with keeping it simple. And the most important thing I said to do is like, like I say, create a four, four second video and then just click on some of these uh, editing tools and see what you can do. I mostly use overlay. And this next screenshot is going to be after I've clicked the word overlay, you're going to see this. The different types of overlays are going to come up. I use arrows a lot. For, I, I tend to use arrows because I can point to stuff on my video. I can highlight stuff. I also use text where I can type text right on the video. And you can control how much, how long it's on there by what you have on the timeline. Uh, I'm not sure that makes sense. Go back. Yeah. So the timeline is right here. I can move the cursor it's at the beginning to whatever point of the video I want to edit and stop it. And then I can click an overlay and I can decide, and there'll be a, there'll be two bars. You can have one bar for where you want that overlay to start and one where you want it to stop. So you'll be able to add your overlay. Like if I, I usually do arrows, if I want my arrow to point to something for five seconds, I can put the cursor right where I want the arrow to start and then where I want it to stop and then highlight. Again, again, this is something you just make a video and click on some of these tools and practice using them. And uh, Regan and I are always uh, available to do it with you too, if that if that a little, little easier to do. Yeah. So after you've made that, you come, you're gonna see save and upload. So when I save and upload, I'm gonna see this next screen and it's gonna give upload options. Upload to screen pal, save as video. Again, there's always an option to edit. You can still edit the video. You can edit the video I had I used a video today that I had made two years ago and it was a little old, so I had to edit it. So it's always easy to, to redo edits on the video. I really like to upload to ScreenPal because then that's going to host the video as well. You really don't have to worry about it anymore. Uh, for videos that you won't have a hosting for, Regan's going to cover uh, hosting, what hosting on videos is. So that allows you to upload right to ScreenPal and that's going to put you back right there. You're going to see so this so when you host a screen pal, it's going to put you back on your dashboard that I started with. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have your video, your latest video here. Again, once you have your video here, you can click on details. Wait for the and then go to the second button and share the video. Right now it's on edit button, so I can edit the title and I can edit the description in there. 
uh, I can change visibility. Mostly I just use this, share the video. You can explore some of these interaction tools, notes, interaction tools. Uh, I, I do have this. I don't know why it's asking me to upgrade. I already have it. I need to re-sign in and make sure I have that. You should have, this shouldn't ask you to upgrade. If you're looking at interaction tools and it asks you to upgrade, let me know and I'll contact Screen, screen Pal. Sometimes they seem to not recognize that we have a deluxe uh, account. You, your deluxe account should let you have interaction tools. Mostly you're going to use the share video. Uh, my final point I want to make is how to share the video. You can use a link. I much prefer to use an embed so that students in Canvas on that Canvas page, if you use an embed code, they're going to see they're going to see the video there before they click anything. Instead of it's just basically basically it's less of a click, you know. So from a from a course design perspective, less of a click is usually good instead of a. But you can give them a link. If you come down here and choose an embed code, you can choose what size of embed you want, and then you can copy the embed code. So their responsive is a new size. Usually it was full, small, and tiny. I usually use tiny or small because full size 1300 pixels is a really large video. I would even I would even try tiny sometimes because a lot of students are gonna be watching videos on their phone. That's probably gonna be easier to watch on the phone. But responsive is new. And so right now I'm picking responsive. That's supposed to respond to whatever they're watching on, I suppose, I think. Is that right, Regan? Is that, that is correct. That respond to the end user's device. Right. That, that's the one I'm using now. So you just put it on responsive and do copy code. Once you've copied this code, you can go into the Canvas. And I'll go now oh, since it's available. I'll go there real quick. Once you have that code, I can go back to my assignment in Canvas and go to this insert button, click insert, insert media. No, wait, no, I don't want insert. I want, uh, I want embed. Under the insert button, I want to go to embed because I'm embedding. And you can, you can just paste that embed code right here. And that's going to put your video in Canvas right there. Any questions so far on using ScreenPal? Hey, Todd, uh, Allison had a question, and okay. uh, she sent it in chat, but I'm not sure. It says, uh, "Hang on, just a second. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't have a question. Oh. I did not have a question. Oh. I was giving Reagan some information. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Sweet. I have a quick question. So I I just tried to create an account and um and it does say upgrade. Who did you say to contact if that's the case? Yeah, me. I'm going to I'm going to write that down right now. Okay. Thanks. Thank you for letting me know. Yeah, thank you. I don't know why it's doing that. Right now. I will contact ScreenPal and then I will send an email out. I'm an idiot. I misread that. Okay. So yeah, even 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 without the Grace account, you you'd be able to start practicing and making videos up to 15 minutes, which, like I say, there'd be rare occasions when I'd recommend going over 15 minutes. It's better to chunk videos into smaller sections. Uh, but I'll follow up on that. Any other questions before we go to Regan and hosting, do hosting? The main point is well, a lot of what Regan and I do is supporting faculty video. So if you have any issues, errors, want help, we'll do any level of helping editing videos. We also have a green room, we'll record videos for you here. So we're all about videos and we're here to support you on that. Regan, you wanna take it away with hosting? I am ready. Just a very quick sound check to make sure that everything is good. I'm and hearing I'm good. Gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, share my screen if it will let me. 
And we're going to look at my, uh, oh, the, uh, uh, my Viking portion of my page. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about hosting. We need to have a place to put the videos once we save them. And there are two um, options, basically, that that uh, we want to look at. The first one, of course, everybody knows. We host a lot of videos on YouTube, just like every other college and every other school in the world. We host a great many of those on YouTube because, frankly, uh, it's easy, it's quick, it's reliable, and it's available. Everybody knows where it's at. So really quickly, I thought I would just go through and hit the high points of posting a video on YouTube and how to embed it in Canvas. Really quickly, basically what we're looking at right now is the uh, is my YouTube channel. And so if you're going to upload a video, of course, first you have to edit it, you have to render it and get it ready to go. And then up here in the corner, there's a create button. And if you click on create, it will allow you to upload uh, a video that you've already created on your computer. So we would click that. And then it's going to ask you to either drag and drop from an Explorer window, or you can open an Explorer window here and select the files, and we can do that. And I'm just going to go ahead and open one uh, that I already have. And to do that, I need to come down here, and that's a it's engage a linking video that I posted a while ago. And basically, I'm going to open that, and it will uh, begin to upload. The upload fast. Uh, upload speed here is pretty fast. I'm going to call that part two. You can fill in information down here if you need to uh, add an explanation. Uh, if you want to use a, a regular thumbnail, if you want to use a, a picture here instead of just letting YouTube pick a random shot out of your video, you can upload thumbnails here. I like to do that. If you want to add it to a playlist. I have lots of playlists uh, in some of my accounts. But you can select a playlist there. And then finally, Regan. important thing. Regan. Question. What is a playlist? A playlist is a collection of videos. A collection Basically, of If you have a, in, in fact, let's look at this one just real quickly. I have a capture the flag video because that's part of one of the courses that I teach. And so all my videos that are specific to that topic, I collect them in a playlist and then I can send the playlist to my students uh, so they can see that specific collection of videos and not get bogged down in everything else. Sorry about that. No, thank you. I should have explained that. But then the important thing is you have to tell YouTube that this is not for kids. Because if you say for kids, they're going to ask you all kinds of questions. Mm -hmm. And it's likely that your video is not going to get uh, posted anytime soon because they have to go back and review it. There's a lot of things they have to do. So no, it's not for kids. Mm -hmm. You'll click next. Click next again, click next again. And then finally, you want to set it to public because we want everybody that uh, has access to the link to be able to see the video. At that point, you would hit publish. And now that video is published. Uh, it uploads pretty fast, but it can take a while to process. Mm -hmm. So until it processes, it may or may not be available. Mm -hmm. So once it processes, then uh, it'll be available. You can, however, even while it's even while it is processing, you can go into the video. And once you do that, then you can come down to the share tab here, which I'm sure everybody knows about stop. Mm -hmm. You can click on share. And then the embed code is found here under this heading. So if you click on embed and click copy now, just like, uh, just like Todd did a while ago on screencast, you can copy and paste this embed code into an assignment or into a page in Canvas, and that will allow you to uh, allow your students to watch the video uh, directly in a Canvas page. And there's a reason why you might want to do that, which I'll go into in just a second about some of the advantages and disadvantages of YouTube. But basically what you can do is uh, any video that you create, you can embed and then allow uh, your students to view that video in a Canvas page. Yes, sir. So so what you just did, you took a video that was not made in YouTube, but uh, hosted it in YouTube? Stories Correct. Right? Do I have the right? Okay. Yes, sir. Where did you make that video? I made this video on my desktop. I filmed it oh. and uh, I used, actually I used an OBS, uh, which anybody is curious about OBS, please contact me and I'll let you know. But I edited that video in OBS. I built it. I uh, saved it as an MP4. 
-hmm. And then once I had that, I went into YouTube and I was able to post it. Okay, thank you. That way you can use video from any source, basically. If you have a video, uh, you have a video that's already on YouTube or if you have a video on some other service, uh, and that's a thing that we can do. If you have a video that's somewhere else, uh, we can download that video for you if you need help with that and then get it to you in a format that you can post on YouTube or some other service. Okay. So that way uh, you have access to pretty much any video anywhere uh, at any time on the internet. But regardless, that is YouTube. Uh, just real quickly, there's some pros and cons to YouTube that I wanted to mention before I moved on. Mm -hmm. Essentially what you have with YouTube is accessibility and reliability. YouTube is up all the time. It's never down. And anyone in the world can you view your video. The problem is just that uh, accessibility. Mm -hmm. Anyone in the world can view it. We have an agreement, for example, with Hobart Welding. Uh, the company that produces those videos for Hobart said we can post those videos and share them with our students, not have our students have to watch them on DVD. Uh, but the 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 kicker was, or I guess the issue was, we had to post them behind a, a secure uh, password wall. We had to put them somewhere where only Grayson people with Grayson IDs could see them. And so to do that, we posted them in a different place because if you post them on YouTube, that would be a copyright violation. We wouldn't have permission to use them anymore. So that is one of the drawbacks. The other drawback, if you've ever watched a YouTube video, uh, or even the ones that are even the ones that are posted, let's just uh, pick one at random. I'm going to pick one at mine because you never know where you're going to go. But if we watch a video, we get to the end. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to let this play the last like one second of this video or two seconds. Yes. But when it stops, what you discover is that you get a lot of ads. Now, this one came specifically from my uh, mm -hmm. deal, but there are a lot of ads. And sometimes they don't use videos that belong to you. Sometimes mm -hmm. they use videos from random places. And so uh, it's a distraction. Your students reach the end of the video. They see 50 different choices of other videos they can watch that don't belong to you. And soon they're off somewhere watching random uh, cat videos instead of watching the things that you want them to watch. So that is the other downturn to YouTube. It's it's accessibility is good, but it can be too accessible. And then it also suggests things that it's an easy distraction for your students to combat that. There is another option that we use here at Grayson. Uh, the way that you get to that is through the My Viking uh, portal. And so here we are in My Viking, and I'm going to click on the Office 365 link here. And when that page opens, I'm going to click on the Apps menu over here. This is an app that belongs in the Office uh, 365 suite. And then down here in the list of apps, I'm going to click on Stream. Stream is a hosting solution that is provided by Microsoft to people who use Office 365. As you can tell, I use it quite a bit. Most of these videos belong to the welding uh, classes. Mm -hmm. uh, this, was, this was our solution to Hobart's request that we not put this in a public location. The only people that can see videos on stream are people that belong to that domain. So in our case, only people with a Grayson or Vikings.Grayson login can uh, look at these videos. So that provided the security that we needed to, to keep up our end of the deal with Hobart. So, but basically it's the same thing that you're gonna find in YouTube. It's It's, uh, if you want to upload a video, when you click on stream, it takes you to this page. If you want to upload a video, you can do that here. Uh, if you want to do a screen recording, it will allow you to do that here. If you want to hook up a camera to your uh, computer, either a USB camera or a, uh, if you have a capture card, it will do that there. And also like YouTube, you can create uh, playlists, which are the same thing. They're just collections of videos about the same subject. But if you're going to upload, when we click on the upload button, it allows us to basically browse our computer, find what we're wanting to upload, and then it allows us to upload that 
just like uh, just like uh, YouTube. It does store the information or stores the video either in your OneDrive or you can change that to SharePoint, which uh, I'm thinking now that OneDrive and SharePoint are combined here for us. But regardless, it allows us to uh, pick a place that we want to upload. And then once we do that, we can hit upload and it does exactly what YouTube does. It uploads it. Once it's there, it allows us to edit the information about the video. Uh, it allows us to add subtitles. And uh, I'll talk about that in just a second. And then it allows us to create an embed code that we can embed into Canvas. And that's the, that's the main important part is it allows us to easily embed things into Canvas that uh, our students can see without too much trouble. Uh, there's a couple of drawbacks to this. And a couple of, I guess, pros and cons I want to go over. The biggest con, the biggest drawback is that your students have to be logged in to uh, either My Viking or they have to be logged into, uh, oops, that's not it. They have to be logged into uh, Office 365 in order to view the videos. That's the only drawback. What will happen occasionally is a student will go to a page in Canvas and it'll say video unavailable. You have to log in. And at that point, they need to put in their credentials. It will log them into um, the uh, Office 365 portal, and then they can watch the video. So that's the major drawback there is, is, is a few extra clicks for your students. But the plus sign there, the, uh, the good thing about Stream is the incredible way that it creates uh, subtitles and also transcripts. So this is a video that I've done, and uh, if I tell it to play the subtitles, it it uh, it does a really good job. the The subtitles are uh, I'm not going to say 100 percent accurate because nothing is, but in Stream they have the I guess the best or one of the best algorithms on the market for creating subtitles, which is required in our uh, in our agreement. Uh, anytime we put up videos, our accessibility agreement says that we have to have subtitles. Also, one thing that I really like about Stream is this transcript over here. This is a searchable transcript. So, for example, in this video, uh, it's about networking. Let's say I wanted to know something about uh, the command line. If I type in command line here and hit enter, it goes through the transcript and it highlights every single instance of where that word command line is used. And so then I can go to that point. We will do a lot of command lines. And it will tell me exactly. So it's a good, it's a good tool for your students. If they have something that they need to review and it's buried somewhere in a video, it's very nice that they can type in whatever topic you have for them. And uh, then that, the video will take them exactly to that point. Nice. Uh, as far as sharing and embedding goes, it's the same as YouTube. You click on the share button, uh, you go to embed code, and it's the exact same iframe. You would paste that into your, uh, into your Canvas page, and then it works, and the uh, students will be able to see it. So basically, we have... Uh, two options. Now, if you have another option, like uh, Todd was mentioning a while ago, if you're using uh, ScreenPal and you want to host there, that's perfectly fine. It has also the same features. I'm not positive about the the, the subtitles for uh, that particular page, but I'm I'm guessing it has them, and I'm guessing they're they're mm -hmm. roughly the same. Uh, YouTube also will generate subtitles. Uh, there are a lot of other Vimeo is another uh, host. We're not going to tell you, no, you can't use that host or yes, you have to use this host. Uh, essentially, what we are going to tell you is that these two hosts are available and they are very effective and we will help you and support you uh, if you want to use these two. Now, if you're using a different host, we may or may not be able to help you because we may or may not have seen it before. So I guess that's our that's our main thing. Yeah, that's pretty much yeah. all listing did i miss anything no i would say though uh, uh, as far as uh, subtitles and accessibility 
They're getting better, but really we still consider if you have a student who has accessibility issues and they need really good subtitles, you're going to want to reach out to Jeffrey Hodge, A-O-D-G-E at Grayson College. Uh, she is at our accessibility office and she can help generate professional level accessibility subtitles. For the most part, YouTube and other hosting platforms uh, they, even though they reach 85 to 90 percent, actually, that's not accurate enough for a student taking a course who has accessibility issues. You're going to want to reach out to Jeffrey Hodge, uh, but it can make it can make it a whole lot better than if you don't have any. So um, and I did have a comment, Regan. So uh, if you're using ScreenPal and coding rec and recording right from there, that will host it there and you're pretty much done. Mm -hmm. uh, what type of tools might faculty end up? using to host in screen in uh, stream okay if you wanted to host in stream you can actually and this i actually discovered only a, a little bit ago you can you can directly record into stream and i didn't uh, i mm -hmm. didn't know that but it's got a similar uh similar recording which i'm not going to hit this because if i do it'll it'll uh whoops i'm not using my share hang on let me share that back again so i can take you back in there all right, so basically what I did, I came back into stream and uh, screen recording. This is a tool similar to what you'd find in Canvas. Mm -hmm. uh, you go in, you tell it what camera uh, it's allowed to use, and then basically you're just doing a screen recording. It's kind of primitive, but at the same time mm -hmm. it works. So okay. that's that would be something that you could use. Also, uh, the library has, uh, we have partnered with the library, I guess the best way to put that. Uh, we uh, have access to a considerable video studio. Uh, we have a green room space. We have a green screen available, uh, a really professional quality camera, microphones, uh, basically all the bits and pieces that you would need in order to uh, video. If you have a class you want to video, and we will be absolutely delighted to help you with this. If you want a video uh, class, we've done several of those already for different departments. Uh, if you want to video your introductory, uh, your welcome video for your class or anything like that, if you want us to come and video your class while it's happening, if you have a hands-on activity that you'd like to have done as a video, uh, we would be more than happy to help you with that. We have access to all the tools and things that you would need, and uh, we can show up, just set up an appointment with us, and we'll be happy to do that. So you have uh, screen recording through the computer you have camera recording based on uh, the tools that we have through the library. And then uh, basically, if you have a laptop at all, you have a webcam and you can you can do live recordings like that if you choose to do that. Uh, if you have any questions about the hardware or software, if you have any questions about things you want to do, contact us and we will be glad to support that any way we can. That brings up a, a good point for me, seeing that stream which is a hosting tool now has screen recording recording and camera recording this is something we see in ed tech a lot and i call it bleed over mm -hmm. every tool is constantly trying to get that in audience and money and so they keep each tool expands what it can do so you have tools that were originally screen recording tools like screen pal that started hosting and then you have tools like Stream that are originally hosting have moved into screen recording. Exactly. There's a lot of bleed over in ed tech tools where really my question for five years on any ed tech tool is what is it? You know, <laughs> if I have some kind of ed tech tool. What is it? And, and especially meaning what are its parameters? So, it, you know, you we're seeing this bleed over quite a bit and it can be really confusing. But as far as videos, uh, you're going to want to record the video probably edit it and host it. And then four, you're going to want to embed it in Canvas. If you're using ScreenPal, you won't have to worry about hosting it. Um, if you're using Camtasia, you're going to want to host it. Camtasia doesn't have a free hosting tool. So if you make a video in Camtasia, you're going to want to probably host it in Stream. Or if you use uh, Captivate like Regan does or Premiere Pro, he uses uh, more advanced uh, video capture tools than I do. Uh, Camtasia is about as advanced as I get, but even with Camtasia, you're going to have to uh, host it in stream. Whereas if you stick to screen pal, it's going to simplify that a little bit. Yeah. 
Anything else you had, Regan? Uh, that's it for me. Okay. All right. Uh, then, unless there's any any questions, anybody, anything we've gone over so far? Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Patrice. Again, reach out to us if you're getting halfway down a, a video project, need help, or any part of it. We're here to do that. So just reach out and let us know.